Hello Internet! Today we're going to be looking at how you can put context menus into your custom editors. Uh, so I have this custom inspector here that is just ba doing some really uh, basic stuff. It has a basic label and then a, a button. And so when that, you click that button, what's going to end up happening is you get, you click the button printed out to the console. So you can kind of see that down there. Uh, and this is just drawing a, a, the example gizmo from a, a previous video that we've done. That doesn't particularly matter. We're not really going to be working with that. It's just, I needed something to use. Uh, and, and so what we're going to be doing is making it so when you click this more options button, it's going to show mo more options. Uh, and so the way to do that is with a generic menu class. Uh, and those classes give you a way to dis display drop-down menus and context menus in Unity. Uh, and they appear OS native when you do it. So it's pretty, pretty neat. Uh, so we have debug.log here. That's where our menu is getting clicked. I'll kind of walk through what the script is doing because this is our, our editor. Uh, so first, you define a custom editor that says this is a custom editor for a specific type in Unity. Uh, we're working with our example gizmo, which looks like this. Uh, like I said, it's from a previous video, so I'm not going to go into too deep about what this does. That's, that's the code. <laughs> and so what this does is creates a custom editor. And then in on inspector GUI, we find our target and turn it into an example gizmo. If we can do that, we work with the graph. Uh, it shouldn't be called a graph. It should be called <laughs> the example. Sure. The old code is leaking over. Uh, and so we take our example. If it's null, we just exit out. We don't want, we don't want to keep going on. Uh, that means the casting failed or something else went wrong and, and it's just not going to work. But if it is, if it is of value, then we can actually start doing things. Uh, and so we end up getting that inspector you saw. And that's just drawn using the editor GUI layout like we have here. Uh, so first is the label, and then we have our button, which just does more options. The way to get the context menu is with the generic menu class. Uh, so if we just do bar menu equals new generic menu, that will create our new menu. Uh, it doesn't actually show it and it doesn't really do anything at this point. It just kind of creates a, a holder for the data you want to display. Uh, so that there's two real functions that we actually we need to get right in order for this whole thing to work. So the first is going to be menu dot add item. And this is going to add a new item to our context menu. Uh, and so the way we do that is we add a new GUI content. There's a number of different things GUI content can store. It can store like a string uh, or a texture or a texture and a string or a string and a string if you want to do like the name of the thing and then a tooltip. Uh, you can see there's eight overloads here and they have all sorts of things in them. Uh, we're just going to use a string because that's the easiest and it, it does what we want. It will just print text in that box. Uh, so we're just going to say print foo. And so the idea of this function is it's just going to print out foo into our console, just like we were doing previously, but this way it's prompted by a context menu. Uh, the next option is a Boolean, whether the option is on or off. This isn't if the option is enabled or disabled, it's if it is toggled on or toggled off. Uh, so think of it like a check mark that's going to appear next to the option for it to indicate that it's either on or off, or if you just want like a default option, like an action, uh, I just set that to false and then it, it, you don't get a check mark. And so the next thing is a menu function. You can create a new menu function if you want, or you can just create a Lambda expression like this. Uh, so there's two different overloads for this. One takes no arguments and one takes an argument. We'll get into the one that takes an argument in a second, but for now we don't need an argument. We can just do this. And so this is going to run the function inside these brackets when we click the option in the context menu. And so what we want to do here is do debug.log foo. And so that should print out foo to our console when this is clicked. And then the final bit to actually get this to, whole thing to show is to say show as context, which will show it as a context menu. Uh, and so that's going to actually find where your mouse is and put it in a place near your mouse, uh, which is usually what you want. So that is enough to get our menu to draw. So if we go here and let it compile and then click the more options menu, 
we sh will see a print foo here pop up, and I should clear this first, just so we know that it's a new thing. We end up getting print or foo printed out to the console here, so it's working great. Uh, but I'd kind of talked about how there were other menu functions here. Uh, we can have one that takes a parameter, and effectively what that lets you do is give it a user data parameter. So we can say foo here, and then instead of taking no arguments into our function, we can take in the name and print the name out here. Uh, and so do something like this, and now our name will get passed in as foo into this and then get called inside of here. And so this is really handy if you want to repeat a, a single function multiple times throughout different commands and just give it a, a different parameter. Like say you're setting the color of something. You may have a dozen or so colors and you want to just pick the specific color, but you don't want to rewrite something to set the color of some material or something every time. You can just write a function and then give it the color as part of the option instead of the entire function. Uh, and so if we do more options here, uh, I'll clear again. But if we do more options, we'll get print foo again, and it still prints foo, even though we uh, messed with our function a bit. So to kind of reuse this, we can pull this off into a new menu function. So var uh, function equals new uh, generic menu dot menu function two. The names are a little bit confusing. Uh, but menu function is the one that took no arguments. Menu function two takes a single argument. Uh, and so this is going to be our menu function two. And we just need to plug our function in here. And so that takes our name in and then logs the name, which means we can take this lambda expression out and just put our function in here. Uh, so that, will, that one will print foo. And then we'll have one that will say, uh, print boo, print bar, sure, uh, bar makes sense, why not? We'll go with the classic. <laughs> and so just to kind of show you what it does, I'll also put in a true here just so we have something that's toggled on. Uh, and so we'll have foo and bar, so now we have two options being called by calling this function. And they should both do the same thing just with different outputs. And so if we go in here, let that recompile, clear our console, and then click this. We get print foo and print bar. Bar has a little check mark next to it, just to show you that it's been selected. And if I click print foo, we get foo. And if I go and click print bar, we end up getting bar. Uh, and so that's sort of how you how you would use this. There's a few other options to, to customize this further if you want to add like disabled options, for example. Uh, we can do one of those quick, but there, there's, a, there's a few other ways to, to add things. This, this doesn't just add items, you can do disabled items like I'm going to do right now, uh, and kind of make it work for whatever you're, you're trying to get it to do. Uh, and so that, that's sort of how you would do this. Uh, we'll just say disabled. You'll notice the disabled one doesn't have a function uh, or any other options. It's not getting called or anything. Uh, so there's really nothing for it to do. It's just there to kind of indicate that that option isn't available right now for whatever reason. Uh, and so just to show you what that looks like, and then I think I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, but yeah, we get disabled and it's just blurred out or, or grayed out or, or not selectable. Uh, and I can't, I can't click it. So that is a generic menu, I guess, and you can use it in most like editor scripts. I used it in an inspector, but it should work in most Unity editor things. So yeah, hopefully you can use this in your projects and it's, it's useful. So let me know in the comments or consider subscribing if you want more of these. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. So until next time, see you internet.